Hello, I'm Derek Walker. I'm the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church. And today we're going to start a new series about the power of God. We're going to discover the power of the gospel. Because the Apostle Paul said that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And that's in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Yes, the gospel is the power of God. It doesn't just talk about the power of God. It is the power of God. That means that the saving power of God is contained in the gospel. And as we speak the gospel forth, it is released through the very words of the gospel. The gospel actually makes the saving power of God present to those who are listening. So that as we proclaim these words, God's power is released. So it's vital for us to know the gospel and it's vital for us to know it well so that we know how to proclaim it and release the power of God for ourselves but also for other people. And so by understanding the gospel in the fullness, we'll have access to that mighty power of God to change our life and other people's lives. So what does the power of, the, of God in the gospel, what does it do for us? <coughs> yes, it says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Now this word salvation is what the gospel does for you. What is, does this word mean? It's actually a big word that includes all the blessings of God. Everything that we lost through the fall, through sin, God wants to restore it to us through the gospel. It includes forgiveness, of course, wholeness, healing, deliverance, eternal life, love, joy, peace, righteousness, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. All of this is included in the word salvation. And so th the gospel is the power of God. It has the power of God to save us, to heal us, to fill us, to deliver us, to empower us, to release us, to prosper us, to restore us. It's not just about forgiveness and going to heaven when we die. It's a full gospel. Romans, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto healing, unto eternal life, unto abundant life for everyone who believes. Who's the gospel for? It's for everyone. It's for everyone equally. The only thing required is that we believe. It says it is for everyone who believes. And actually the gospel also imparts faith to the hearer. As Romans 10:17 uh, says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, by the gospel of Christ. And so what is this gospel? It's, been in, it's a treasure that's been entrusted to us, but we need to know what it is so that we can release its power. And that's what we'll be studying in depth in this series. Because the more we know about this gospel, the more we'll have access to this power unto salvation that it it, that it talks about. Now, of course, gospel means good news. And that's the first thing we need to understand. It's a positive message of good news from God. Whatever situation you're in, God has good news for you. He has the power for you that will turn your situation around. Jesus called the gospel the good news to the poor. Yes, if you're poor, if you're lacking, if you're needy in any area of your life, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whether it's in your heart, or whether it's in your mind, whatever area of your life, then the gospel is good news for you. Because the gospel says God's power is here to meet that need. Hallelujah. To restore you, to enrich your life. It's also called the gospel of Christ, or the good news of Christ. It's a message that's centered in a person, Jesus Christ. You see, the Christ actually is the equivalent of the Hebrew word Messiah. And this Messiah was the subject of many prophecies in the Old Testament. They prophesied a coming savior king who would die for our sins, rise from the dead, and bring salvation to the nations. And so the, the gospel of Christ is a message, good news, about this Messiah, about this one, who he is, what he did, and what he'll do for you if you believe. Yes, 
the gospel is also about the anointing or the power of God, for it is the gospel of Christ. Now, Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. So it's a good news message about the anointed one and his anointing. It tells you that Jesus is the Christ. He's anointed for you. He's anointed with power to save you, to heal you, to deliver you, to set you free. Yes, the anointing of God is on Jesus for you, for your salvation. That's the good news. So it's all about Jesus and his anointing. Praise God. And since the gospel is the power of God unto salvation... The saving power of God is actually contained in the very words of the gospel. So that as soon as the gospel is preached, this power is made present to the hearers, you see. Therefore, the gospel must include the proclamation that God's power to save is present and freely available right now for all so that anyone who believes can receive it. Then, since the power of the gospel is in the words of the gospel, as we proclaim that, The power to save is present for all. The power to save is then made present to all by those very words. Luke 137 and 38 are very interesting. It's usually translated, with God, nothing is impossible. Wonderful. But literally, it means something else. It literally means no word of God is without the power within itself to fulfill itself. Praise God. So God's word contains the power within it to fulfill itself. So as we declare the gospel that God's power is here for you now and is freely given to you, then this word from God that we speak fulfills itself. And so the saving power of God is released to them through the words that you speak so that it's available for them to receive God's power right now. So this proclamation, this now proclamation is in fact the good news of Christ. The good news is that God's power is here to save you, to heal you, and it is freely given to you now in Christ. Praise God. It's paid for by his precious blood, so it's a free gift to you, and you can believe that, and you can receive that right now. The gospel is a now message. It says now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. It's here from you now. God isn't holding it back. He's giving it freely, so receive it now. In fact, we could translate Romans 1.16 in a way that makes this clear, that the gospel actually declares God's saving power is here for you right now. This is how I could translate it. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the good news about the anointing power of God, for it is. What is the gospel? What's the message of the gospel? It is that the power of God unto salvation is, is here for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. In other words, the gospel is the good news that the power of God for salvation is here now for you. Just believe it and receive it. Praise God. And so the proclamation is that the power of God is present for your salvation, for your healing. And it's a free gift. And the power of God is actually in the words that you speak. And so it's released to the hearers as we speak them. Hallelujah. The gospel is a declaration of the saving power of God that God has sent to mankind through his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's the anointed one, the source of this power. And if you put your trust in him, you will receive that power from him and it will change your life. It proclaims that this power is present and available as a free gift for all men. It's also a message of grace, of course. It's called the gospel of grace because it offers and brings a salvation through Jesus Christ that is a free gift for everyone who believes. There's no works or qualifications required to earn it. No, it's free, praise God. It's a free gift for everyone. All we have to do is believe and receive it for ourselves. We believe the gospel and receive that power into our lives as a free gift. As Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes, this good news of God's grace is that God offers to all men a salvation that is full and free. First, it's full 
because it covers every area of our life, every need that we have. God withholds no good thing from us. Hallelujah. And it's also free because it is paid in full by the blood of Jesus and it's offered to us as a free gift. He doesn't withhold it until we deserve it in some way. He doesn't delay giving it, but he gives it now, freely, so you can receive right now. Praise God. It's good news to us. The gospel is the good news that it's God's free gift to us now. If I held out to you 20 pounds, and if I said to you, and I gave you good news, and that good news is I was giving this to you now as a free gift, you would believe me, I hope. And you would reach out and you would take it. And exactly the same way. God offers us salvation as a free gift. And he wants us to believe this offer that he makes. it, And he wants us to reach out with the hand of faith and receive it. And it's a free gift. Hallelujah. And therefore the gospel proclaims that the saving power of God, the healing power of God is freely given. And it is present now. For you to receive. If we don't receive the power of God unto salvation, it's either because we willfully reject the gospel or it's because we're ignorant. We don't understand it properly. And if that is the case, we will miss out and fail to receive God's saving power in our lives as we ought to. And we won't be able to help others. So this series is designed to remove your ignorance so that you'll know the gospel in its fullness, you'll be able to benefit from it yourself and help others. Hallelujah. You know, every Christian, of course, has heard and received the gospel, in part at least, otherwise they wouldn't even be born again. They've received forgiveness, eternal life, but there's so much more to the gospel than than just forgiveness and going to heaven. And if you are ignorant of the gospel in the other areas, the full gospel, you'll miss out on so many of the other blessings of salvation in the gospel because the gospel covers every need of man, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. We know that because of the gospel Jesus preached included healing and deliverance and prosperity. The gospel brings the power of God to save us in every area of our life. Hallelujah. Healing for our body, healing for our mind, and our emotions, deliverance from the power of evil, empowerment to prosper, wholeness in our life and relationships. Praise God. And if we're ignorant of the gospel in any area, we will fail to receive the power of God in that area. So our top priority should be to gain knowledge of the gospel, eliminate our ignorance, so that nothing can block us from receiving God's power unto salvation in our lives yes I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes yes you can only receive this power according to your believing and your believing can't go beyond your knowledge of the gospel so if you only know the gospel in part then your experience of the power of God is just going to be partial but if you know the full gospel you will know it in full You'll enjoy his power in full. And that's what this series is all about, called the anointing message, to design to impart to you the fullness of understanding of the gospel. And you can receive the fullness of blessing in your life. Yes, the gospel is the power of God. It doesn't just talk about the power of God. It is the power of God for salvation. God's saving power is in the very words of the gospel. It's released and made available to people when you speak those words of faith. And God transmits his power through his word and through his spirit working with the word. And so it's only as we speak the words of the gospel, proclaim them, herald them, that the power of God unto salvation is activated and released, made available to people. I could say it, it's put online for people so that they can then download it by faith. Through the preaching of the gospel, the power of God is made present. So when you share the word, you don't just put faith in their hearts, but also what you're doing is you're bringing the power of God online for them, for them to be able to receive it. But what power is made present, of course, depends on what is preached. Because if we preach healing, then healing power be made present. 
according to the word we preach. But if healing is not preached, then no power is made present to heal and no faith is built in people's hearts. So if that's the case, we shouldn't be surprised if nobody ever receives healing. Well, that's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. You know, to be ashamed of something means you never talk about it. You keep it hidden, even when you're asked about it. Are you ashamed of the gospel? You are if you never talk about it, if you never share it. No, Paul says he's not ashamed of it. In other words, he keeps sharing it. He keeps talking about it. Why? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And if he's ashamed of it and doesn't speak, then no saving power is made available to the people. And so God's power is in the gospel and works through the gospel. So we mustn't be ashamed of it, but rather we must open our mouth and boldly proclaim it. Because then, the bolder we are with the gospel, the more of God's power is put and made available to people because it's released in the very words that are spoken. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, it says. Then in verse 17 it says, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just or the righteous shall live by faith. You see, the gospel provides salvation for the whole man. But it all starts with the blessing of forgiveness and righteousness. You see, because the fundamental problem of man is sin. So sin, you see, brings every other problem in its wake. The wages of sin is death, is the curse. And death in all its forms, sickness, poverty, is the result of sin. Well, when man sinned in the beginning, he lost his state of righteousness before God. He became disconnected from God. And then as a result of that, he lost everything else. He lost his health, he lost his joy, he lost his peace, he lost his glory. And so the first thing the gospel has to do is to restore righteousness to God, to man. Then when we are right standing with God, then every other blessing can be ours too. As it says in Romans 14, the kingdom of God is first of all righteousness. Romans 14, 17 is righteousness, joy and peace. Notice, first it's righteousness, then the other blessings can come. Joy, peace, healing, everything else. Righteousness is the door into the kingdom and into every other blessing of God. Once we receive his righteousness, then we can receive it all. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says, for in it, in the gospel, Romans 1, 17, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. Praise God. Our own righteousness is like filthy rags, but we need the righteousness of Christ, and it's revealed in the gospel for us as a free gift. Praise God. Let me show you how it works. Just imagine you were in terrible debt, million pound debt, and I made an arrangement with the bank, and I made the, the deal, and I fixed the transaction, and so that at the moment you agree to it, your debt is wiped out. I take all your debt on myself and at the same time the I put a million pounds is going to be put into your account that would be a wonderful exchange wouldn't it your debt for my wealth and then it's done it's set up with a bank and then I come and tell you the good news hey I've arranged this exchange for you it's all done for it's paid for all you have to do is agree to it and sign for it if you believe the good news, if you had any sense, you would sign, wouldn't you? And the moment you signed, that transaction would be done. And that's what the gospel is. It's the good news that on the cross, Jesus has took our sin and exchanged our sin for his righteousness. And the moment we believe and we're put into Christ, all our sin is remitted, removed, and we receive in exchange the righteousness of Christ. And then God looks at us and he says, you are righteous now in my sight because you're clothed with the righteousness of Christ. And this means that we are now justified. We are just or righteous before God. Justified before God. Hallelujah. That's what 2 Corinthians 5.20 is talking about. It says, for, it says, we are ambassadors for Christ when we preach the gospel. 2 Corinthians 5.20. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. In other words, accept this great exchange that God has done for you. For, he says, he made him, Jesus Christ, 
who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ. That's the great exchange. He, our sin for his righteousness. It, and now it says, God says, God pleads with you and says, accept what I've done for you. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, and a few verses later, he says, in an acceptable time, I've heard you. In the day of salvation, I've helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Now, behold, now is the day of salvation. Accept it now. It's a free gift. Accept the great exchange. And the moment you believed in Jesus Christ, praise God, you received that salvation and you were given righteousness to stand before God and to receive all the other blessings that belong to you now. Yes, hallelujah, God forgives you and makes you righteous in his sight. And that's what he's talking about in verse 17. For in it, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, the righteous, shall live by faith. What does it mean here? From faith to faith. There are two levels of faith he's talking about. Because there's two things you receive through the gospel. First of all, you receive righteousness by faith. And then you also receive life, abundant life by faith. Which includes healing and blessing in every area. And so he says through the gospel, there are two things you receive. From faith to faith. First of all, you receive righteousness by faith. Then you receive life by faith. Hallelujah. And that's answers the question now. He says, the righteous shall live by faith, or should it be, the righteous by faith shall live. Well, the answer to that is they're both true. Really, we should translate it like this. It's from faith to faith. It, they're both by faith. And it should be, for the righteous by faith shall live by faith. Yes, first, you become righteous before God by faith. You believe the gospel of sin and righteousness. You receive the righteousness of Christ. You're made righteous by faith when you're born again. And then it says, you live by faith. The righteous by faith shall now live by faith. Or they receive life from God by faith into every area of their life. Abundant life. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from one level of faith to another, as it is written, the righteous by faith shall live by faith. Yes, first you receive righteousness with God. Now you can stand before God, righteous with the righteousness of Christ, and you have the right to receive every blessing of God for every area of your life. That's why Romans 5.17 says, For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned through the one, death came through sin, much more, those who receive abundance of grace, that's the grace of Christ, and the gift of righteousness, that's where it starts. You receive the free gift of righteousness when you trust in Jesus Christ. He says, those people will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Yes, once you're righteous by faith, you can receive so much grace and life for every area of your life that you reign in life. You receive dominion back. You receive power back into your life and you can reign in life. Yes, the gospel of Christ is the good news about the anointed one and his anointing. The good news is that God's anointing, God's life, God's power is here to save, deliver you, restore your life. It's for everyone who believes. The power of God unto salvation is contained in the very words of the gospel. And so as the gospel is preached, that power is released to those who hear. The gospel proclaims the power is present for, the, for people. And since it is the word of God, those words fulfill themselves. And that power is actually made present to them through the words that you speak. So the gospel proclaims the power and it also makes the power present by the proclamation. And I declare the gospel to you right now in the name of Jesus. And as I'm doing it, I'm making his power available to you. And you can receive his power right now. I declare in Jesus' name, even as I speak, that God's power is here for you to forgive you, to cleanse you, to restore you, to empower you, to save you, to heal you. It's a totally free gift. Jesus has paid the price in full for your full salvation. He's risen from the dead. He's alive forevermore. And he's poured out his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he offers you his saving power as a free gift. Take it now, it's yours. Reach out with faith and receive it right now. Pray with me. Say with me these words out loud. Say, Lord, I believe. Right now, I receive 
your free gift of healing, salvation, cleansing, abundant life. Thank you, Lord.